up with God. We live stream daily Mass today. We attend the Holy Mass on Wednesday, 26 June 2024, Wednesday of week 12 in ordinary time. Make your home in me, as I make mine in you, says the Lord, whoever remains in me bears fruit in plenty. Please keep quiet and concentrate on attending the Mass. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Keep the Faith, the daily celebration of the Holy Eucharist with the Jesuits here on Radio Katipunan. Today is the 26th of June, 2024, Wednesday of the 12th week in Ordinary Time. Our presider for this morning's celebration is Reverend Father Jeff Pocong of the Society of Jesus. Let us all rise and join in the singing of our entrance hymn. Brothers and sisters, let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Thank you so much for inviting me to preside over Mass here in Radio Katipunan. So this is my first time to preside this Mass because I was just newly ordained last June 1 with three others. Bob, Ketsley, and Richard. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest Hilkiah informed the scribe Shaphan, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, who read it. Then the scribe Shaphan went to the king and reported, 
Your servants have smelted down the metals available in the temple and have consigned them to the master workmen in the temple of the Lord. The scribe Shaphan also informed the king that the priest Hilkiah had given him a book and then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the contents of the book of the law, he tore his garments and issued this command to Hilkiah, the priest, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Achbor, son of Micaiah, the scribe Shaphan, and the king's servant Asaiah. Go consult the Lord for me, for the people, for all Judah, about the stipulations of this book that has been found. For the anger of the Lord has been set furiously ablaze against us, because our fathers did not obey the stipulations of this book, nor fulfill our written obligations. The king then had all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem summoned together before him. The king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, priests, prophets, and all the people, small and great. He had the entire contents of the book of the covenant that had been found in the temple of the Lord read up out to them. Standing by the column, the king made a covenant before the Lord that they would follow him and observe his ordinances, statutes, and decrees with their whole hearts and souls, thus reviving the terms of the covenant which were written in this book. And all the people stood as participants in the covenant. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law, and keep it with all my heart. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to gain. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Turn away my eyes from seeing what is vain. By your way, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your justice, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits, you will know them. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Again, um, good morning uh, to all of you, to all of us gathered here and those attending this uh, Mass online, uh, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude for to Radio Katipunan, to Jes Jesuit Communications for uh, inviting me today to celebrate this Mass. Um, maraming salamat po sa invitasyon. 
In today's gospel reading, one of the things that easily comes to my mind is the teaching about a people of integrity. Hence, the need for vigilance and discernment on our part. We hear Jesus warning his disciples against false prophets who disguise themselves as trustworthy and dependable guides, but whose real nature is harmful and dishonest. Perhaps this teaching is inviting us to look beyond appearances and mere rhetoric and focusing instead on the tangible effects of one's actions, especially its effects on people's lives. Just as healthy trees produce good fruit, a person's character and intentions are ultimately revealed by their deeds and the impact they have on others, especially in society. We are all too familiar and we've been hearing stories about people returning valuable items such as bags, wallets, purses with money, etc. Returning them to their rightful owners. Many of the people returning these valuable items are either taxi or cab drivers, janitors, and other utility workers. The simple people who are earning their daily living by doing difficult dangerous and at times dirty jobs. Those who are toiling very hard no, and really grinding for a living. How we wish the same is true for our government leaders and public servants who are entrusted with our kaban ng bayan. Unfortunately, we know that it's not because sadly, too, there are already systems or kalakaran, no? both in the government and even in the private, private sectors that somehow make transactions quicker, faster, but at a cost. And it's not only simply about money, but more so, it has become an issue of integrity already. And so we are very much amazed by these stories of honesty and integrity as exemplified by the common tao, hoi polois in society, in contrast to those who are in position of power that fails to uphold their integrity. In the world of sports, no? for example, especially for those who are tennis lovers, perhaps you remember that infamous incident between Andy Roddick and Fernando Verdasco. No? I think it was mid-2000s, 2005, at the Italia Masters in Rome. Roddick was one of the top tennis players at that time. No? And he dominated as expected and had triple match point when something extremely unusual happened. No? He was leading in that match. Rodic could not return Verdasco's hard second serve. And, but the linesman called the serve out and awarded Rodic the point and the match. He won that match. However, Rodic knew something that the linesman, the umpire, the cheering crowd, and Verdasco himself did not know. The serve had not been out but had hit on the line, making it in. Rudik could have kept this information to himself and accepted the victory, the applause of people. Instead, he informed the umpire that the ball had been in and offered to show him the mark on the clay where the ball had hit to prove his point. The umpire reversed the call and awarded the point to Verdasco. According to the internet write-up, no, which I verified this story, it says, and I quote, Integrity was clearly more important to Rodic than either winning or the money. And the Rodic lost a tennis match that day, but won something much more important, and in the process set a great example of sportsmanship, sportsmanship for competitors everywhere. End quote. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, your life and mine have an influence on those around us as well. Your spouse, your children, your brothers, your sisters, and the rest of your family members can be profoundly affected by your choices and decisions in life. Your colleagues and co-workers, your neighbors, and even your friends will also be impacted by your life. As the world tries to persuade people to follow the standards of the world, you can choose to stand in stark contrast to the worldly standards and you may set an example of righteousness for others through your simple day-to-day -day affairs. 
the way we live our lives can become a testament to others and convince those around us of the wisdom, the mercy, the goodness, and the deep love of the Lord for us. Dear friends, may we never underestimate the positive effects of living a life of integrity upon those around us. Moreover, we know that living a life of integrity also challenges us from time to time. At times, God will be the only witness to your righteous behavior. Sometimes, God is the only one who will understand our motives. Oftentimes, too, you will do all you know God has asked you to do, only to face ridicule from others, even from your loved ones. At such, at such times, maybe we, all we can do is to maintain our integrity, trusting that God always keeps us His eyes on us. Remember that God looks favorably upon those who walk with integrity, doing what they know is right, regardless of how others perceive their actions. The most important thing, perhaps, is not that people know the truth, but the most important thing is that we are persons of integrity before the Lord. When no one seems to understand why you have done something, or when others question whether you have done all you should have done, your confidence should be in the knowledge that God keeps you in His sight. If you have this confidence, hopefully, it will be enough to sustain you. Furthermore, we have to be aware also that the world may tempt us to compromise the truth. We may be fooled into thinking that we can accomplish the greater good by withholding the truth. But we have to remember, dear brothers and sisters, that we can never use deception in order to build God's kingdom. God refuses to use sinful means to accomplish His holy purposes. We may be tempted to live a lie by projecting a false image of ourselves. Jesus condemned this as hypo hypocrisy. When we sin, we will be tempted to conceal the truth. Yet only as we confess the truth will we be forgiven and set free. For what we say reflects what is in our hearts. If our heart is filled with deception, our mouth will speak of falsehood. Therefore, we beg the Lord's grace to fill us with His truth so that when we find falsehood in any form, we find them, them abhorrent and detestable. Lastly, the Gospel today challenges us to discern and look deeply at ourselves and others, to seek and cultivate true goodness, and to remain vigilant against deception. By focusing on the fruits of our actions, we can ensure that our lives bear witness to being true disciples of Jesus Christ, who is himself the very model of honesty and integrity. Amen. Please rise as we offer our prayers and intentions. Jesus' death and resurrection has borne for us life-giving fruits. Through our prayers, may we as modern prophets give good fruits for the church and the world. For every petition, let our response be, Lord, fill us with your goodness. Lord, Lord fill, fill us with, with your goodness. goodness. That the church may lead the Christian faithful to the road that leads to the values of love, justice, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. That our poor people may not be exploited or misled by false and ambitious leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. That people who are victims of injustice may be healed and learn again to develop trust and friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. That the sick and the dying may draw strength from Jesus, who came to the aid of the sick and the helpless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. That the dead may finally receive the rewards of their labors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. For those celebrating their birthdays, 
Rosario Melchor, Joanna Alberto, Jasper D., Mini Larios, Audric Ayuban, and Samantha C. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. For the healing of Mila Soledo Garcia, Ronald Atelano, Tisha Aganon, Abi Puno, Rebecca Gellior, Gines Nabung, and Mini Larios, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. For the repose of the souls of Rosely Valera, Isauro Peralta, Sonia Lee Lopez, Puring Rodriguez, Feraya, Virginia C.H. Verhel de Dios, Conchita Samson, Diding Bernardo, Father Gonzalo Pimentel, Pablo Medina Jr., and Corazon Season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. For the special intentions of Sibal Family, Chinky Teodoro, Bless Malilin, Eden Rabena, Weng Andrada, Maisa Castaneda, Pog Santos, Gabe Ocampo, Hans and Nate Gonzalez, Annie Bautista, Debbie Tan, Liza Hal Halandoni, Welvi Cadigoy, Doctora Susan Jorge, Marge Matutina, Hannah Gonzalez, Nelia Nazareno, Yvonne Luna, Marivic Ocampo, Gregorio Family, and Alberto and Lontok Family. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. Heavenly Father, you are our strength in time of need. Open our hearts to your grace and lead us into your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please all rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And to with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall 
so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Conching and Ilyasar, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like this, like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. To the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, to the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we be married to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
is rise. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure, sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.